Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! Today we have a piece of African sumac. Now when you look up African sumac and you do a search for toxicity of African sumac, the very first link that comes up says every part of the African sumac tree is poisonous to humans. Hmm, thanks a lot, Tuffy. And it says whatever you do, don't burn it because that will, uh, the smoke will drift throughout the area. That concerned me when I when I looked that up. And I'm not sure why I even looked up toxicity. That's not something I normally do. But on the other hand, apparently it planted as a landscape tree. It's a pretty tree. Uh, it has flowers. It has nice slender pointed leaves. And it's very popular in neighborhoods for landscaping. So what to do, what to do? Well, I'm going to turn it. Now, I don't have a death wish. On the other hand, I do have a highly competitive spirit. So... <laughs> We'll see if I can turn it before it makes me sick, before I can get it done, I don't know. I talked to Tuffy about it, and he said, you know, I cut those pieces up, and I didn't have any issues at all. And this was a larger piece that I put on the bandsaw and cut in half myself, and I didn't have any issues. Somewhere along the line, someone has some bad information, but maybe it's good information. I don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to find the center of this piece that's roughly 9 inches square. I'm going to drill a hole here in the middle for my woodworm screw. We'll get it over here to the lathe, get it mounted up, and start the turning. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to start turning over here on the corners, and I'm going to approach from the top side down. Uh, I'm trying to keep the bark on. This is beautiful bark, and I'd like it to stay. I'm going to use my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 550 RPM, mask and face shield on. Ow. I gotta put a glove on, that hurts. Let's see if I can pick the speed up any. About 700. I'm going to flatten off the bottom. I think that's where a lot of our vibration is. Now let me see if I can pick up the speed. That is about a thousand. Okay, let's mark out for a tenon. I have kind of a rounded shape here going on, and I, I guess I kind of like that, so we'll stick with it. So this is pr a pretty broad base. But if I bring it in too much, then I'll lose my centered roundness here. But it's just too ugly that way. Well, I think this base is still too big, and I want this rounder, so I'm going to come over this way and round it up a little bit. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to use this diamond point tool 
to uh, square up the sides of the tenon. That's good. I really want a rounded profile on this outside and I can get a smoother cut going from this direction that way than I can coming down from the top. So I'm going to flip it around, take care of that outside profile and then flip it back this way to finalize it. So I need to get it off of the woodworm screw. onto the tenon. Now I found the best way to do this for me, being an old guy, rather than just push on here with my thumb, I like to bring up the tailstock and drive that live center in there and push the piece push the tenon into the chuck jaws and then tighten it up and that way I know that it's well centered and well seated. So all the bark has stuck with us so far, huh? Yeah, it looks good. So now I can work on my side profile. Here we go, still turning at a thousand RPM. Might have lost a piece of bark there. Probably right here. This wood is a lot harder than I would have imagined. Okay, now I'm going to flip it back around and try and blend the, the bottom with my side and top here. What I'm trying to do here is just, can you see this line? This ridge? I just want to blend these two together. The top half and the bottom half. Get rid of that ridge and make it more rounded. And then I, I want to make my tenon just a tad bit smaller and get rid of the chuck marks so that I it'll be true when I set it back in the tenon again. Still turning in a thousand RPM, five eighths inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. I think I'm about there. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I had in mind. Okay, let's rework that tenon a little bit. And for that I'm going to use a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge. And that's good. Time for sanding. I'll be sanding with my two inch disc sander with the lathe spinning at about 350 RPM in reverse. And then I'll alternate between forward and reverse. And I'll work up through 400 grit. So that's what that's going to look like. I'll bring you back in a few minutes when it's time to put some sanding sealer on here, I'm pretty sure. See you in a bit. Well, I must say this is very nice wood. It turns nicely, it feels so good, and it's pretty.
I am applying sanding sealer. Um, it'll probably only take one coat because it's it's really tight grained and I got a good good sanding on it 400 grit but one or two coats of sanding sealer whatever it takes and then uh, two coats of shellac feels kind of weird to turn something around also kind of fun and easy because it's so much easier to sand something that's round so I'll get this finished up and get the uh, shellac on there which goes on exactly like I'm applying the sanding sealer no difference whatsoever I just put it on with a rag just like this and then I'll bring you back when it's time to turn it around and start working on the inside. I'm really looking forward to that. See you in a bit. It's time to hollow. I'm going to be using my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 1100 RPM. Mask and face shield on. Okay, we've reached our bottom, about a quarter inch thick. The sides are thicker, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get too close to that bark. That's as far as I'm going. I'm gonna hunt around here for some bark and see if I can't glue pieces back in here. It's not the end of the world, but it'd sure be nice if it was there. Give me a minute. Well, I've gathered up a few pieces of bark that I think are sufficient to fill these two spots, this one and this one. And I'll, I'm gonna try and do that and, and just CA glue them in place. But first I'm gonna scrape and that's what's next. Okay, well I don't know if I should sand first or glue the bark on first. I guess I'll glue the bark on first after I clean up a bit. Well I think I found the actual piece that goes here because uh, the inside of it follows this inside contour. So I think that goes there. And I'm just going to put some CA on here. Might be easier said than done medium CA and then I'm going to spray some accelerator on here and then I'm going to place the piece where it goes at least I'm gonna try to I'm gonna hold it there a minute yeah yeah that's good then I'll need a little piece for here and then I'll need two or three pieces for over here. So this is what I'm going to be doing for a few minutes before sanding. I'll see you back here pretty quick. I wanted to show you that you can obviously see that I've replaced this piece. What you may not be able to see is that it was actually went there. Which piece was it? This one. And the reason we know it went there is because it has finish and a bevel to match everything else on the outside. So that piece actually went there as well as 
these two pieces, this one and this one, because they also have finish on the outside and a matching bevel. This piece right here I put in there didn't go there, but it looks pretty good. I've got to do a little bit of trimming out here on it. And of course I have to trim all of this in here. But once this is sanded and finished, you're never going to see it. You're never going to know that it didn't go there. So how am I going to trim it? I, I kicked around the idea using a Dremel, uh, using a handsaw of some kind, but I don't think I have anything that with with teeth fine enough to do that. And I really don't want to work with a Dremel because I'm afraid I'll, you know, do this and mess up the inside, which is quite nice. Hardly even needs sanding. So I'm just going to do it this way. I don't, I don't know if this is strong enough to cut it or not or sharp enough. I'm going to hold pressure where I glued it and just try. I, I'm not going to try and get it perfect because when I sand it, it'll, uh, smooth it out. I just want to get the big parts off of here. See, don't slip with the knife, Phil. Gouge the inside, you big stupid. So I just, I just have to get it close enough. So I'll be working at that for a while and I'll bring you back when it's time to do some sanding. See you in a bit. Well, I spent quite a little bit of time going over this. Uh, I did use a Dremel tool. I've got it all nice and flush with the inside of the bowl. I've got it all flush with the outside of the bowl. There's nothing to hang up on. This bark is kind of delicate anyway and kind of brittle. So there were some other loose pieces that they, they stayed in place, but I could kind of wiggle them. So I put CA glue on a lot of spots and now it all feels, it actually feels quite smooth and uh, solid. I, I feel pretty confident about it, but it looks good, right? Looks, looks great. So now the sanding starts, except I'm not prepared. I'm going to use my Sando Flex from the inside out because I don't want to come in from the outside and ruin my nice finish I have out here. So it'll just be from the inside out, smoothing this even further and a little bit along the top like that. I'll show you that on the drill. And then I'll switch to a two inch sanding disc. I'm starting at 150 grit. I'll do the inside with that and I'll show you that after I get my mask on. Well, if it can withstand that, then I feel really good. And that's going to look so nice with finish on there. And then, with the lathe spinning at about 350 forward, I'll take my 2 inch disc sander. And that surprisingly doesn't look like it's going to be much of an issue. So I'm happy. I'm really liking this piece. I'll bring it back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on the inside. See you in a bit. Here we go. This is going to look so good once I get the uh, sanding sealer on the bark and then the finish. This is all about the bark, although the grain is quite pretty too. I just can't get over how hard this wood is. It's just way harder than I, I guessed. And the reason that I guessed that is because this is an evergreen tree. And around here, evergreen trees are softwood. So now I've put some of the sanding sealer in this little can and I've got this acid brush. And I'm just going to brush it into the bark, but I need to be careful that I don't go over the outside edge on my nicely finished outside of this piece. It's a very coarse bark. It's going to take some time to uh, get this down to, into all those grooves. So this is what I'll be doing for a while. And what I did on the outside was two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of shellac. So I imagine that's what I'm doing here. So I, I won't make you watch all this. I'll bring you back here in a little while. See you in a bit. The time has come to remove the tenon off of this very pretty bowl. I've mounted a block of wood up in the t in the chuck here. It's got a non-slip surface on it. And I'm just going to place the bowl over that and bring up the tailstock. 
I still have my center hole there for reference, so I will drive the live center into that. Wiggle the piece around a little bit, make sure it feels centered. And it does. I'll bring up the tool vest. I'll spin the piece up. Hold my thumbnail against the tenon and see if it's hitting equally all the way around and it's absolutely perfect. I'm going to take a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and begin to remove in that tenon. I just want to check for clearance and I have good clearance. I like to leave this center part raised up a little bit for visual interest when I can and I can so I will. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so I, th I can get in there a little tighter. Now it's pretty small, so I'm going to slow it down to about 400 RPM. Just keep working it away. So now I'm going to raise the tool rest a little bit more and get a little bit closer. And that's to keep myself from getting under that little nub because that will cause it to pop out of there. And now I'm going to slow the speed down to 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the piece. Pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I'll just take it over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Well there it is, one African sumac live edge bowl in the books. It's pretty, don't you think? I love that bark, oh my gosh, are you kidding? Look at that, oh my. That just really sets the piece off. There's the bottom all finished up. The piece is about eight inches by three and a quarter inches tall. It's beautiful and I finished it without dying. So maybe you can't believe everything you see on the internet. Thank you Tuffy Marginas for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.